Hi there. Let's talk about some wild functions. The first function we're going to talk about is f of x equals sine of 1 over x if x is not equal to 0, 0 if x equals 0. One question you might ask is, is f of x continuous? Well, if we ask this question, we really should be talking about uh, on its domain or on a specific point. So let's think about this for one second. We're going to clarify this question. It's clearly continuous when x is not equal to zero because sine is continuous when x is not is continuous everywhere, and one over x is continuous when x is not equal to zero, and the composition of continuous functions is continuous. So the only problem is when x equals zero. So the only thing we need to check then is we need to check. Um, we need to check that the limit as x goes to 0 of f of x is equal to f of 0, which is equal to 0. So we want to know, is f of x continuous at 0? Now to explore this, we should look at a plot. Here, and this might give you your answer. Here is a plot of f of x, and as you can see, while it looks nice and continuous away from zero, as we get closer to zero, it, it oscillates wildly. And in fact, in any, any interval near zero, you can find uh, points that are uh, uh, at negative one and one. So, so, in fact, uh, so in fact, this function is not continuous at zero. However, if you take sine of 1 over x and place an x right here, then we have a very different function. And we can still ask the same question. Is this function continuous at 0? Well, let's look at a plot this time. Let's look at a plot of this function. OK, okay so here we go. Here is a plot. It's, it's looking like it might be continuous. So how do we show that x sine of 1 over x when x is not equal to 0 and the function is 0 when x is equal to 0? How do we show that this function is continuous? So here we'll use the squeeze theorem. So we're going to suppose that we have three functions instead of one g of x less than or equal to f of x less than or equal to h of x on some interval uh, near a certain point. In our case, it will be 0, but for the context of the theorem, it's going to be a. If the limit as x goes to a of g of x equals l, and this is also equal to the limit as x goes to a of h of x, then the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals l. Now this might be this might seem pretty confusing to you, and maybe maybe we should look at a picture. A picture often makes these clear. So here we have h of x, and here we have g of x, and our function that we're interested in is some wild function that's squeezed in between them. And the squeeze theorem says if this function that's always above, if the limit equals the limit of the function that's always below, then the middle function has to have uh, a limit there too. So let's go ahead and see this in the context of our function. So our function looks like, looks like so. And we need to find functions that bound it above and below. Well, the, function that's, the functions that are going to work are going to be the absolute value of x is going to bound our function above, and minus the absolute value of x is going to bound our function uh, below. So let's go ahead and see if we can use the squeeze theorem. So basically, we want to say, to prove f of x is continuous at 0, use the squeeze theorem. So what are we going to do? We're going to bound it. So we're going to bound it by, we're going to put minus the absolute value of x is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to the absolute value of x. And um, why, why is this true? Well, it's true because 
if you look at this, sine of 1 over x, this is always a number that's less than or equal to plus or minus, uh, well, it's, it's between 1 and negative 1, inclusive. And so when I'm multiplying it by x, we're going to have that uh, it's bounded by minus the absolute value of x on the below and the absolute value of x above. Okay, so now, what's the limit of minus the absolute value, negative absolute value of x? Well, as x goes to 0, the limit is going to be 0. And if we look at the one above, well, the limit of the absolute value of x is also equal to 0. Therefore, by the squeeze theorem, it tells us that our middle function, f of x, the limit as x goes to 0, is going to be equal to 0, which if you recall, is equal to f of 0. So f of x is continuous at 0. So we've seen a wild continuous function. You, you may ask, are there others? Yes. Consider this function. f of x equal to the fifth root of x sine 1 over x if x is not equal to 0, 0 if x is equal to 0. Now this function is going to be continuous everywhere except for possibly at 0. It's continuous everywhere else because, well, 1 over x is continuous every place else. Sine is continuous every place else. The fifth root of x is also continuous every place else. So is, oops, this continuous at 0? Well, let's see a plot. Let's see what it looks like. Oh my goodness. Well, this looks pretty terrible uh, around around zero because hey I mean you, you can see this huge this area where the function seems to be oscillating wildly is it continuous though now how do we show this is continuous to prove that f of x is continuous at zero we're gonna use the squeeze theorem alright so we need a function that's below and above now let's look at f of x real quick since f of x is equal to the fifth root of x sine of 1 over x, and sine of 1 over x is basically always between negative 1 and 1, we can bound this by the negative of the absolute value of the fifth root of x below, and we can bound it by the absolute value of the fifth root of x above. Now, what's the limit as x goes to 0? of the fifth root of x. Well, it's, it's going to be of, well, I should put that in there, fifth root of x. This is going to be zero, which is also equal to the absolute, the limit as x goes to zero, the absolute value of the fifth root of x. Therefore, by the squeeze theorem, the limit of f of x, and let's see a picture of this real quick. Here I have the function above, and here I have the function bounding it below. Therefore, by the squeeze theorem, the limit of f of x as x goes to zero is going to be zero, which is equal to f of zero. And that's exactly what we need for f of x to be continuous at zero. So we've seen three examples of functions. The first of which was not continuous. The next two were. But all those functions were pretty wild and crazy. I like that. Okay, let's go do some more math.